Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we have some trade rumors to go into. I'm going to do it on the fly like I always do. No preparation. Just hit the thing and go. Right? Sit there all day editing and blah, 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 blah. Just want the meat, right? We want to know what's going on and have some frolic while we're doing it. <laughs> That's what I do. I just sit down, hit it, and go. So you know. So if you're looking like, well, how come he didn't go over that beforehand? Because that's boring. I don't want to do that stuff. That's why I'm fun. Um, Chikrin. Chikrin. I would only have to imagine that Jacob Chikrin asked for a trade out of Arizona. This is a rebuilding team. Did you hear about this? I don't know if you heard about it. I'll show you in a, two articles, actually where it looks like they're exploring a trade for Jacob Chikrin. I cannot see in a million years that Arizona would be doing this unless Jacob Chikrin asked to be traded. And before you go off on that, that if you're going to, I don't blame them a bit. I talked about it earlier that uh, I talked about it in other videos that I would be I very surprised and impressed, I guess, to a certain degree, if Chikrin decided to stay in Arizona. He's been there his whole career. He's 23 now. He's looking at a bare-bones roster that probably won't be relevant for five to seven years or more, if you've seen the Edmonton Oilers and how long they had to take. Hopefully for Arizona, it won't take that long, and I don't think it will because I think Armstrong's doing a heck of a job collecting assets there. But let's can make it there we go that's a little better but um if i'm him i'm like i'll be 27 28 before we're even relevant and that's even just getting to the point of relevancy really unless they hit it right out of the park and get like a mcdavid which is possible something like that but even then you can see how long a team can take i think it'll be about five years away armstrong's collecting draft picks as long as they hit on him and in st louis he showed that uh he knew he did well in that organization for drafting, so I think that that'll be about five years. And for him, that's a lot of his career being on a bad team where he's already been on a fairly bad team that just barely makes the playoffs in one or and and one round and out. So I don't, I'm not, uh, don't blame him at all. But let's take a look at the articles here. Uh, some really impressive uh, people. Uh, came up with this. For the first time I heard it, I was like, no bloody way. And then I saw this. Uh, yeah, this is uh, ho- this is Pro Hockey Rumors, a very good publication. Gavin Lee, I love his stuff. Uh, and generally speaking, when Gavin Lee is speaking something, it uh, at least has some validity to it. Uh, in the offseason, Arizona made it clear that they would be going through a full rebuild, and they did. I did a, uh, There was an article in The Athletic about that. I thought it was excellent, and they weren't shy about it at all. They were saying, this is what we're doing, flat out, burn it down, rebuild. Uh, they got rid of Larson, Garland, Christian Dvorak, the one player that seemed untouchable, and yeah, for sure was 23-year-old top-pairing defenseman signed to a very reasonable 4.6. That's the other thing. Very reasonable. If you don't know who Chikrin is uh, because you don't follow Arizona or what have you, I watch a divorce-worthy amount of hockey, and I'm tell- I, I believe he, is, he has Norris-level capabilities. Solid, unbelievable room guy, leader. Everything you want in a defenseman Chikrin is. Offense, defense, physical, intense, everything. The guy's freaking awesome. He's a stud defenseman. And he's only 23 years old on a reasonable cap fit for a few years. What? Are they going to get a lot for him? Yes. And we're going to look at what that'll be. Uh, Chikrin seemed to be embracing the, or- the organization and was become one core piece with Coyotes Jim. Not so fast. Elliot Friedman, you know, all know who Elliot Friedman is, of Sportsnet wrote in his last 32 thoughts, latest 32 thoughts, column that the Coyotes are gauging the market for Chikrin. 
So the ask is massive and it should be. The insider expanded on that. Oh, on the Jeff Merrick show. Oh shoot, I should have. That's probably a video, so I'm not gonna be able to show you yet. Yeah. It's gonna be absolutely enormous anyways. I don't really need to go into that. It's gonna be huge while well, we'll talk about it in a second. When Friedman asked Armstrong for a comment, he refused to give one at this point. So you got Elliot Friedman, Jeff Merrick, uh, all of like very, very, very inside guys saying that this is a very good possibility. Uh, moving over, I'll, I'm going to give you a hint of one of the teams that would be all over it. And it doesn't surprise me even a little bit and excites me at the same time because I am an Oilers fan. Uh, another really good guy here, Jim Parsons from the Hockey Writers. Uh, he's, he uh, mentioned that Jacob Chickren could be available in trade. And the Edmonton Oilers were quick, quickly connected to the conversation. I'm sure they would and would be. And uh, we're going to go to the Edmonton Oilers to see what it exactly it would cost. Now, before I get in here, and I'll be talking about this a lot with all of the teams, I'm. this is a general, I, this could be a huge overpayment. When a guy like this comes up, which is very seldom, a young stud defenseman, teams will go gaga. And they will, and, and he hasn't said there's specific teams he will go to. It seems like an open book. Uh, they can go to any team. Every team in the NHL will be calling about this guy. Every single team. So right now the Coyotes have all the leverage in the world to pin one teams against each other to get max for this guy. The return is going to be ridiculous. So let's first look at the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers, what would they have to give up? I, sw I think, personally, as much as I love Chikrin, I don't, like when, we look at, when we look at all the other teams that what they are going to be able to give up or willing to, likely willing to give up, especially if there's a big bidding war here, I don't think there would be much left to the Oilers team. Um, like if I'm asking to start, just to start, Puglia Harvey, I really want a center actually, if I'm getting chicken and they don't have one. So, uh, except for, uh, except for, uh, in their prospects, which we'll look at Puglia Harvey, uh, you're going to have to, they're, they're going to have the thing about Edmonton here is. They also are going to have to do something to make the cap room work, even though it's only $5 million. Probably throw in Tyson Berry. That would be a throw in. And honestly, if I'm Coyotes, I'm like, now nah, pass. Uh, <laughs> Tyson Berry's horrible defensively. Um, Cody Cece or whatever. Like just Now, if you're throwing in players to make the cap work, you're actually, I, as a Coyotes man manager, as Armstrong, I'm like, okay, but that's going to cost you more prospects because I'm doing you a favor now. Like, that's how much leverage he has in this deal. Um, then let's say they throw in Tyson Berry. Then you're looking at guys like Dylan Holloway uh, and uh, Broberg. Broberg. Another young left defenseman, Broberg. Uh, I might as well reach out and take uh, Konevall off too. Like I, and you're like, no, that's way too much. I'm not going to give all that stuff like that. Well, you're not getting them. And the first round draft pick next year, maybe two first round draft picks. Uh, like on and like, it's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot. The phone call. It, it, basically, if you're going to get somebody like Chikrin, if people really understand his value. Your team is, this team is going to be dismantled quite a bit. Quite a bit. Um, especially prospects. I don't even know if they have enough. Hollow, like Dylan Holloway, Broberg, Puglia Harvey, first round pick, Barry. Might do it. Might. And I'll show you why as we go through the rest of these uh, teams that would be available. I mean, it depends how much they like Holloway. Holloway looks like he's going to be a gamer. Is he going to be a true number one center? Uh, Jesse Puglia-Harvey, 
is putting up some decent points right now at 23 years old. Nice pickup. But we're talking about a guy who many believe has Norris-level talent. Norris-level talent. The Oilers don't have that, and they desperately need help on deep. It would be enormous to have this guy on this team. You could fill out the holes some other way. Uh, you'll have to add through free agency or whatever, but I bet you even if you asked, gave that package, the Oilers would be humming and hawing and going, should we do this? It's going to give up a lot of our youth, pretty much all of it. But let's look at why they're going to have to give up so much. First of all, uh, Jacob Chikrin sees $4.6 million for five years. Uh, 6'2", 210, huge boy. By the way, he's from Florida. We're going to look at that the next video, possibly Florida. 16th overall. And yes, his numbers are... Um, his numbers are bad this year, minus 29. He's on the ice all the time on a stupidly bad team. It's really nothing. Uh, and and it, I, I bet you if you looked at his analytics and his, his uh, off expected offense, expected defense, they would look stellar. His plus minus doesn't tell much of the story anymore with the analytics we have right now. The fact of the matter is the guy is beastly. He had 41 points in 56 games as a 22-year-old. 26 and 63 is a 21 year old. Those are absolutely stellar offensive numbers. He's he's an absolute beast. So next, look at the Ottawa Senators. I think the Ottawa Senators would be all over this. They got Kachuk, Norris, Batherson, Stutzla, uh, a lot of offensive pieces in uh, Shane Pinto, who's injured. A lot of offensive pieces there, but really their defense is pretty thin. Now, I I am not so sure that they're as high in Shabbat as they ever once were before. It's possible they could put Shabbat plus in this deal. But I think it would have to be Shabbat plus, seriously. He's making $8 million. Uh, you know, Chikrin's only making five. Now he's going to have to be re-signed. But it, I think it would have to be Shabbat Plus. And I, if I'm them, I'm looking for, uh, if you're not giving Shabbat, I want Stutzla. Plain and simple. I want Stutzla. Uh, otherwise, you're looking at Norris and Shabbat and a first or something like that. Uh, it's going to cost that much, man. It's seriously going to cost that much. As far as their... their uh, prospects like really there's not jake sanderson okay we'll we'll stay away from shabbat but you give us jake sanderson uh maybe we'll stay away from stutzla if you're going to do jake sanderson we'll go norris and your first next year possibly two that's it depends like if i if i go to ottawa and say look they're offering norris Sanderson, who's a first, and a first next year, okay? And you probably think that should be enough for Chikrin, okay? I, I get you. But what if we then go to New York or Detroit, which I think I'll get to in another one. They go to New York, and, the, and New York is in a situation now where they are getting close to being – there. They're getting close to being there. Um, they got a lot of their young guys like Creter, uh, what well up, Creter? Young guys like Kako is improving this year. 10 points in 25 games. I, I think it's only 21 years old. 10 points in 25 games. Calm down, Rangers fans. The kid's going to be okay. Uh, same as Lafreniere. He's only 20 years old. He's going to be okay. Is he going to be like ranting and go great or anything like that like he was projected i'm not sure but you're still pretty solid here you're and now you're looking at they're they're looking at this lineup going maybe these guys aren't per developing as much as we would have liked um and we have an opportunity here to have maybe the best defense in the league really quick if in fact they're in on Chikra. It's not what they really super need. I think they would need more offense than defense, but
but I don't think you can ignore a guy like Chikrin if he's available. I just don't think you can ignore it. And they can give a ton. They don't need their first round picks next year and the year after that. They can give two firsts. Uh, they could offer up Ryan Lindgren since he wouldn't need to be in the top pair anymore. Ryan Lindgren is a freaking awesome defensive defenseman. Awesome. He's only 23. Chikrin is a better overall defenseman. Him and Fox on their top D pairing would be just unbelievable. You'd have two Norris caliber, one already won a Norris. The other one probably would ha get one eventually too on your team, man. Now you got to pay for both of those guys too. But Ryan Lindgren, let's say, go for that. Um, maybe maybe they're souring a little bit on the idea that Lafreniere is going to be what he is. Throw him in there. You got Lafreniere. Uh, Philip Heidel, which at, last time I did a video, they made fun of me because I said Heidel. I don't know why I want to say Heidel. I know why. Because it says hi right in the freaking last name. Anyways, Heidel. They could throw Heidel in there. They don't need him. They just keep Strom. Or they could throw Strom in there. First round picks. They could look at the defensemen they got coming up. They got Jones, Robertson, and Schneider. You, they could give you one of Jones, Robertson, and Schneider and still have lots of defensemen coming up in their, their depth chart. Uh, Vitaly Kratsov isn't even playing with the team they could throw him in. Like, that's what you're going to be looking at. And this is the kind of package that a player like this, a stud defenseman, Basically, uh, Chikrin is much the same as having another Adam Fox. Maybe not quite as good defensively. Like, what are you going to give up for that? What are organizations going to give up for that? Tons. Tons, man. It's going to be sick. That's why I said I don't think the Edmonton Oilers are going to have enough. I, I don't think they have enough in there to, to compete with the Rangers if they were in on that. And we'll be going through other teams in future videos. But uh, New Jersey, look at New Jersey would be absolutely spilling all over the phone. They'd barely be able to hold it in their shaking hands. If Chikrin was available, my gosh. And yes, Ty Smith would be there. Yeah, we'll give you Ty Smith. Are you kidding me? Ty Smith. Uh, or what about both the Hughes brothers? The Hughes brothers, possibly. Uh, people will say, well, Hughes is going to be every bit as good as, I don't know about that. Is he going to be every bit as good? Is he going to be a Norris candidate? No, nope. when he was drafted, people weren't talking about Norris candidate. He's getting, he's got 18 points in 20 games in, in the U University of Michigan. That's really good. Um, is he going to be, is that offense going to be able to translate into the NHL? Also, he's in the U of Michigan. If you know anything about that lineup, you're going to get a lot of points. That lineup is insane. You got Power, Beneers, Johnson. It is a stacked lineup. So he's going to get a lot more offense than probably he normally would. But that's the kind of thing we're talking about. Say, let's put a different package together here. Say, you don't want, we're not going to get rid of all those guys. Uh, throw, let's go Jesper Bratt. Uh, we don't want, uh, we just totally don't want to get rid of Dawson Mercer. That's the heart of the identity of your team right there. Uh, Jesper Bratt, Ty Smith. Uh, let's say Miles Wood if he ever comes off of injured. And uh, Colton White's first round picks. Uh, New Jersey could do that. and They have so much. They still got Kevin Ball that they're playing right now. They have a lot in their depth chart that they could absorb this not too bad to get a Norris level defenseman to play with Dougie Hamilton. They're going to be all over it, man. They're, it's going to be rich. It, the package is going to be absolutely enormous. I, I believe. I believe it will be. Um, but is it worth it? Tell me what you think, New Jersey fans. Philadelphia Flyers, this is the first one I got messages from people. First thing, Philadelphia Flyers are going to want. Yes, absolutely. Well, bye-bye, Ivan Provorov. I, I don't see how Philadelphia is going to be able to get. We, we just talked about the package that everybody is 
offering here, first round picks and all that kind of stuff like that, likely offering. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I, I, I think the package for this one, when they see it, because Arizona's got all the time in the world to wait to the deadline or summer or whatever to get to just keep on building that package over and over and over again. I don't think they got enough. They they won't have much of a roster left. I think it would take Konechny. Uh again, like any any one of these teams offer up a pre a one line a number one center like say Ottawa with Stutzla. You know maybe, but. If you're not offering that up, you're, you're going to be getting rid of a lot of your roster. Konechny, Provorov, first-round pick. Farabee would be asked for. I don't, I'm not saying every single one of these guys, but, I mean, close. Close. Tyson Furster, Cam York. I mean, it's going to take Cam York, Furster, Farabee, at least, and first-round picks. At least. So what is that, you know? Is that worth it to you? Do you understand how good Chikrin is? A Norris level young 23 year old defenseman. Like, it's going to be huge, Philadelphia Flyers fans. So tell me what you think about that. And finally, I got Montreal. Uh, I think this is the probable, maybe the least likely. Just simply because if the the reason why Montreal would do this, if they identify Chikrin as a guy they want to build around, the problem here is that I don't know if Chikrin would be too happy to go to Montreal. And you want a guy to be happy because they're pretty much in the same state as Arizona. But I had a bunch of people message me about it and what it would cost. It's going to cost next year's first, which could be, you know, right. So Shane Wright could be, could win that. I mean, Arizona would be perked up for a guy like Shane Wright for sure. No doubt about it. Would they be willing to roll the dice that they win the lottery and be able to get him? I don't know. But that would, that might do it, might get it. And you get a Norris level defenseman at 23 years old now. So if Montreal is looking to do a quick rebuild, that might not be a bad idea. Because you already have that defenseman, you can build around him. And one thing I can say, I don't know where Chikrin's head is at, but Montreal probably has a more advanced lineup than Arizona does. Like they could do a rebuild a lot faster than Arizona. So that would, I think there would be discussions with his agents and stuff like that. Montreal will be calling though. And if you don't include the first, I don't know what you'd have. You'd have, I don't. You'd have to give up everything in the. I don't think they got enough. That first is going to have to be part of the deal. So if that's off the table, I don't think Montreal's getting them at all. Okay, that's my full 42. I thought I would do quickly a bunch of teams now. I'm going to do more because every team is going to want. Every team is going to want Jacob Chicken. For sure. No doubt about it. Come see me on my live if you want to talk about this. Come to my live stream from 3.30 to 5.30 weekdays. The NHL Pearl O Wisdom Show. Interactive. Talk about everything. We love talking about trade rumors, trades, uh, movements, free agency. We talk about the games every day. Whatever you want. All the 32 teams that you can talk about. We talk about whatever you want. So you're you're you can be part of it no matter what team you are. All part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like four majors, the four major sports and teams within those four major sports, you'll like the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Thank you for listening. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye. Well, that's my full forty-two. I forgot to say that.